Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. So today we have Secretary Hillary Clinton in an alternative history, which was, this would be the showdown that was always meant to be, the two front runners that were deemed years before the actual primaries actually occurred, and of course Jeb Bush um, running on the Republican side. Everyone thought Jeb Bush was going to be the nominee, and he wasn't. Um, yeah, he lost. He didn't win a single primary. But yeah, so the presumed front runner in 2013 came up short and Hillary Clinton was the nominee. So um, this is an interesting case because this is still 2016. The scandals are still behind Clinton. Um, Bush would still probably lose a lot of the Trump vote. Um, but we're going to factor in how each state would vote. So obvious states, we'll start with the Republican states because we never start with the Republican states. We always start with the um, Democratic states. So I'm going to start filling in the toss up right now. But um, Georgia would not be a toss-up, West Virginia, Indiana, um, Missouri would not be a toss-up, Florida would not be a toss-up either, um, Illinois, Minnesota would not be a toss-up, Colorado, actually Colorado I'm going to leave as a toss-up, but um, Nevada, that one would also be a toss-up, Oregon, Washington, safe Democrat, California, Hawaii, um, obvious one, obvious ones, the entire Northeast, um, Michigan would be safe blue, I'll fill that one in just a second and give you reasoning for that. Although Trump did well in that state, Jeb Bush is not that person to appeal to the white working class, nor would he be able to corral the number of voters that Trump did. Trump only won by 10,000 votes, Bush couldn't even win a primary. Um, you know, that would be very hurtful to the Republican Party um, if they tried to win in the Rust Belt. They would need to focus on other states. So North Carolina would be a toss-up. Pennsylvania, I would consider somewhat of a toss-up. And, of course, New Hampshire. So this is the current electoral map. Bush is leading 219 to Clinton 217. Um, right now, Bush has Florida, um, while well, Clinton has Michigan, a state that she didn't win in 2016. So we're going to go through each state, starting from the western coast. So Nevada, they have a heavy Latino population. You know, I think that... Um, since this is going to be a, um, a very hotly contested general election, Bush would possibly become the victor in the state of Nevada by a narrow margin because of the Latino vote, and Clinton would not be able to. Clinton only won the state by 2% against President Trump, and Trump was the one who was um, perceived as anti-Hispanic, yet he outperformed Republican candidates in terms of the Hispanic vote. Bush coming from Florida with the Hispanic um appeal, he would win the state of Nevada. But it does not go for the same the state of Colorado. It voted for Clinton a little bit more. But the um, the weed base and the progressive base, I don't see them coming out for Bush. Um, whereas the state of Nevada voted for Hillary Clinton in the Democratic primary. So now we have Clinton ahead at 226 to 225. Still a closing up election. Uh, let's be honest here, North Carolina is probably not going to go to Clinton. Bush is not the candidate to lose North Carolina. Um, he would have heavy support here amongst conservatives. There wouldn't be a never Bush movement other than some Trump supporters not coming out to vote for Bush. But Bush would do um, well in corralling the conservative vote. But um, in the state of Wisconsin, that state would go to Hillary Clinton. Um, again, the white working class argument, Clinton would be able to take them, especially with Obama winning them. Um, somewhat overwhelmingly in 2012, although Trump was able to carry the state, Bush would not do as well against Hillary. Um, just because of the fact that Bush is not as inspiring as Trump, he does not amass the crowds. Um, he would be a very boring candidate, although he may do better than Trump in the debates. The debates proved to show nothing in the 2016 general election. And right now, Bush leads at 240 to Clinton to 236. We're going to fill in another state for Clinton, and that's the state of Pennsylvania. Um, I think the DNC helped being held out definitely helped her in 2016, and she still lost the state. Um, a lot of the leaner vote there that was going to that said they were voting for Clinton, but actually voted for Trump. They wouldn't be as enthusiastic for Bush. They saw Trump as a economic candidate, being a businessman, and they gave him a chance. Um, whereas Bush would not be perceived the same way. He would be perceived as an establishment Republican, just like Mitt Romney, and they would vote in their Democratic ideals again. And now we go to the state of Iowa. The state of Iowa would go to Bush. Um, the showing of the turnout, the conservative vote, the loss of Democratic voters in the state of Iowa, um, unregistering and not coming out to vote, um, the new voter laws definitely would give Bush the upper hand in the state of Iowa, giving him six electoral votes. Um, but then we go over to the state of Virginia, and I would give that one to Hillary Clinton. The reasoning behind it is, I think with the Tim Kaine factor, I think she would be able to take the state of Virginia, and even without it, the state of Virginia, although it did have a strong Bush identity, they broke away from him by voting for Obama, what a state was previously strong red flipped to the Obama column. And it, 
if it went for Hillary against Trump, um, she would most likely win it again. And out of Nebraska, you know, the conservative vote would be really strong for Bush, so I don't think that many conservatives would be drawing away from the Clinton column um, and voting for, from the Bush column, sorry, and voting for Clinton. And now it comes down to the final state. So now we have Clinton winning with two, I'm mean, Clinton ahead at 269 to Bush's 247. Now, in the state of New Hampshire, that one's going to be really tough because there is that conservative base, and Clinton narrowly won the state against um, President Trump. It was by around 2,000 votes, and that's a very slim, that's a razor margin, and I think Bush would actually be able to carry that state. I think he would corral more Republican voters than Trump did, although Trump did win the primary. It wasn't a clear 50%, and overall, I think Bush would be able to carry the state of New Hampshire against Clinton just by appealing more to the northeastern part. Um, and I think he would campaign more there rather than how Trump campaigned in the Rust Belt rather than in states like New Hampshire. I think Bush would focus on New Hampshire um, and not the Rust Belt. So now it comes down to the state of Ohio, and it's not going to end how you think it's going to end. It's going to end with a Clinton victory. Um, well, if you thought Clinton was going to go in, I guess you're right, but I mean, um, that 269 there was very tempting to make it seem like a tie, but it wasn't. Um, I think Clinton would be able to carry the state of Ohio um, although the auto bailout doesn't directly affect Ohio um, that much as it would affect Michigan, overall I think the state of Ohio with the Obama f appeal, Bush's, um, Bush won it in 2004 and the year 2000, but they turned away from him and voted for Obama. I think Obama would campaign out there. I think it would really help Clinton in that state. And overall, I think this would be the final electoral map. Clinton would win um, 287 to Bush's 251, ultimately making her the 45th president. Um, this is an alternative history. If you guys want me to keep doing things like this, comment down below. If not, I'll revert back to my 2020 um, election predictions. Other than that, thank you guys for watching this video, and I'll see you all tomorrow.